Hi everybody, Martin at Flicking Feathers again today and I'm tying a suspender zonker for you. Really effective uh, fry pattern for trout but it also works for bass etc. Um, tying a saltwater hook I'm sure it will work for species in the salt as well. Uh, tie them in a range of sizes, this is a 2, got a 6 here. You know, you, you do need to match the the size of the forage often. Um, it's surprising how picky trout can be when they're smashing bait fish. So the hook I'm using is a Varivas 2500V streamer hook. Good strong hook. Uh, and I'm using some 6 or Danville's flat wax nylon. Got to start it at least an eye width back from the hook eye. Um, no run on a short base of thread. But make sure there's plenty of space. This is 3mm anyway. And I'll take my foam. This is an 8mm foam dowel. Um, obviously, use an appropriate size. You know, if you're tying a, a 6, for example, you might want to get down to a, a 6mm. And, uh, and I've tapered it at the end just to help stop it busting or anything when I tie it in. I'm just going to take my wraps, a couple of wraps, take the lot, grab it. Then I'll gradually sort of tighten up on it and just tighten that down, not your way forward. And you can see that because you've left the space, you don't need to worry about rushing your eye and crowding your eye with the foam. I'm just going to take a few wraps in front to help lock it in place, and then again just continue to. Tidy up, compress that foam. Another lock and wrap. The lock and wraps help stop it twisting. Uh, rib, you can use various materials. I'm just using silver wire. But uh, mono works very well and it's very tough. So, I'm just going to tie my rib. As I, as I go down. And you can see I've left this foam really big. Right? I've, I'm not trimming it. Um, well, I might trim it a wee bit. But the, it's important to have a ton of foam to float, the, float this big hook. Now you can trim it back on the water if you feel you're getting a, a refusals or anything like that. But the key thing is that the fly floats. So the body, I'm using a pearly flash dubbin. It's just the light bright, just pearly light bright. Angel here dubbing, angel dubbing, something like that. Ice yarn, ice, ice dubbing would work fine. Don't be shy, you're going to need quite a bit of dubbing on this. So get that started and then keep it tight. Just tighten it as you go. Now, As you come forward, I'm got. You can start to got to go back and put a taper in. And this actually also increases the durability of the fly, like having a couple of layers. They definitely last longer if you tie them like this than just one big thick needle. Um, it's easier for like, the fish's teeth to get in and sh shred up the dubbing 
eventually you'll lose it if it's just uh, a single a single layer or you'll definitely lose it a lot quicker than you will when they're tied like this right so just a bit more and then when we get to the front right I'm almost sort of where my head my head's all got to be tied in um, This is optional, but I quite like it. I'm going to just take a pinch of red SLF. I mean, after all, you're imitating a wounded bait fish with this. Um, it's most effective when you see fish crashing fry uh, or minnows. You know, when they've herded them into the shallows, you cast this into the edge of the... the where they're smashing them and let it hang there like a stunned fish so I like this wee touch of red, it looks like an injury as much as a gill in my mind, but you don't need to do it if you if you think it's a waste of time don't waste your time so I'll just tidy this up a bit then I'll take my zonka which I've cut this so that extending beyond the hook is like a body length not a shank length um, it, that's just how I measure these so that I sort of keep the, the remain proportionate as I go through different hook sizes it's important not to leave the zonker too long or you're on the risk of it fouling um, but I, I find a body length gives it a nice proportion so tie that in Tidy everything up and tie it in nice and secure because you want to pull it quite tight and then split your split your rabbit fur on the zonker and catch it in with a turn of rib and just sweep all the hair up you don't want to you don't want to be letting it get wrapped around the shank by the by the by the wire, and then as you go forward, just the same. Just separate the hair. Take your time. You don't want to, you want to avoid trapping any and flattening it. Always sweep it up, make sure it's free. Hold on at the front and put a bend in the wire across the thread. Oops. Put a bend in the wire across the thread. Support your hook and just helicopter it away. And nice smooth head. Whip finish. We're ready for the eyes. Now eyes, sort of your choice really. I like flat tape on these because I don't want to add the too much weight from the like uh an epoxy eye and a 3D eye. So just taking these wee flat 3mm flat uh, tape eyes just get them on And when you're happy with them, I'll 
I like to come in with a bit of UV resin. This is just loon thin. Get that coat it up. Then hit it with your light. Make sure it's thoroughly cured. And that's it. That's the suspender fry. I'll trim this back just a wee bit. That should be plenty. Um, really, really effective pattern for trout, uh, especially, I mean, depending on where you live, but if you live in the UK, great at the back end of the season, uh, it works really well for bass as well, um, you know, especially if you, you know, you cast it near some cover, give it a pop, just let it hang, let it sit there, uh, really effective pattern. So I hope you enjoyed that, I hope it was useful, if it was please give me a thumbs up before, below and uh, remember to like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks very much for watching guys, tight lines. <laughs>